What's going on guys? How you doing? Today, I'm here with something a little fun. It's really big. <laughs> it's on the table and I can't quite get into the camera. But, uh, this is, um, this is a hobby of mine that I've been wanting to bring onto my channel for a while. Uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff with video games and movies, but I also really love tabletop games, especially tabletop role-playing games, and I'm really big into collecting, you know, tabletop miniatures. So, uh, last year, or I guess technically it was two years ago, I was in the fortunate enough position financially to be able to contribute to the latest Reaper Bones Kickstarter for Bones 4. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. Uh, pretty much in this box is a bunch of 28mm scale uh, miniatures for tabletop gaming, for painting and stuff. Long story short, if you don't know what the kickbox uh, Kickstarter is while I open up this box. I'll tell you basically there's this company I think they're in Texas called Reaper miniatures and they have this line of Miniatures in fact, I can show you a Reaper bones. They make tabletop miniatures kind of like these Let me see if I I don't know how in focus it is. I have my camera on manual focus I'm probably using autofocus for this uh, in a nutshell these are for you know tabletop gaming like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, all that kind of stuff. And they make these, you know, metal miniatures like this. But they also, I think it was like in 2013 or somewhere around there, they launched a new line of more affordable plastic miniatures using some of them reuse sculpts for the metal miniatures and some of them are totally new sculpts. And the whole point of the Kickstarter is to help fund, to help fund the latest batch. And because you help fund them, you get them you get like a ton of them absurdly cheap so in here is a little shy of like 300 something miniatures excuse my forearm here because i contributed to the uh the core set and i bought a whole bunch of the expansion sets so i figured we'd do a little unboxing take a look i'm i'm very excited to open this up <clears throat> all right so I'm going to try and tip it a little so you can kind of see in there. There's a lot of lights going on. I'm sure it's all reflecting off the, off the plastic. Um, so I was in wave three of the shipping, but I didn't get this until quite literally today. And the reason is because one of these items, and I'm looking at it right now, there was like a whole problem with the shipping, so to speak, and they had to delay it. But uh, there's a cool little flyer here. But I've, uh, you know, we're just gonna skip ahead. I'm gonna talk about that in a little later because I got some extras in here too. But what I really wanted to look at is I got the core set right here. Um, we're gonna open that first. I'm just gonna put it to the side because we're gonna do some jump cutting, as you can probably guess. And then uh, let's see what else we got in here. They did, there were four expansion sets. I only got three of them. I didn't really want the last one, but this first one is Dreadmare. And I wanted this one because if I can show you the art on it, it kind of really gives off that, you know, dark fantasy, gothic fantasy kind of vibe to it. And at the time that, you know, the Kickstarter was going on, I was running a campaign with that setting. It's funny because that campaign ended, so. <laughs> but you can never have too many miniatures, so. You know, I'm looking forward to this. We're going to open up that one, too. Uh, this is another one. This is Dark Reach. This is all about, you know, subterranean stuff. Like, stuff from the Underdark and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of drow in here. Everything like that. We'll take a look at that. And then, one I am personally very excited for is the Lost Valley expansion. And the reason is, is I has a guilty pleasure really enjoy prehistoric fantasy i feel like it's never done enough and i love using dinosaurs in my games just everywhere whether it's in jungles you know in forests uh sometimes you have some skeletal dinosaurs come to life it's just a little of fun so uh, i also like using you know like wild men caveman type guys every now and then too so uh this one I was really excited about because it's hard to find those kind of miniatures in scale sometimes. Usually with the dinosaur miniatures, they're like way too big. So there were some things in here I was really looking forward to 
uh, actually getting. So we're gonna open it. We're gonna save the best for last. Put that to the side. I got some extras here. So let's see. So I got a whole bunch of different plastic bases. I'm not really a plastic base guy. I prefer to use wooden bases, but uh, you know, teach their own. I'm not. Some of these I'm not gonna open, by the way, because they do require some assembly. So we're only gonna look at some of the ones that are already assembled. But I got the skeletal monsters over here. This is the rock. I had bought the rock, not not the wrestler, the uh, giant bird to add to my collection because I don't really have one of those. And that's one of those things where, yeah, I could get a cheap dollar store giant bird and paint it up, but I wanted something that was a little nicer. This, I think, is the dragon turtle. That's going to require a lot of assembly, too. Oh, this is the, the demon guy. I, I'm blinking on his name. Oh, it's right here. Uh, Nargloth. I didn't really have like anything for a Balor or anything or a Pit Fiend, so you know he's gonna certainly serve his cause there. And this is the little bugger that was delaying my shipping because I should have gotten this weeks ago. This is the Tree of the Spear. All it really is is a tree with some vultures on it. Let me move this box out of the way. That thing's a bit more organized. All right, let's take a gander at the core set here. Uh, this is actually the first time I've done one of these Kickstarters. I've, heard, I've known about them for years, but I had never really been in the right kind of situation where I could actually take part in one. So this is kind of my first one, and I'm very excited. All right. As you can see, there is a lot of miniatures. <laughs> Almost too many miniatures, although you can never really have too many miniatures. Now, like I said, some of these do require assembly, so it's going to take some sifting through. Um, trying to, The hardest thing is figuring out where to start. Because the other thing is you don't want to just open a bunch of these that need assembly and have them all over the place. And then next thing you know, you need to put things together, you can't find it. Alright, I guess we can start. Or actually, better yet, how about I do a little jump cut to when I have these unpacked and... A little more organized. That seems like a smarter idea, Mitch. Don't waste your camera and your light batteries. <laughs> so, I went through the core set. I'm kind of freehanding right now, so bear with me here. I went through the core set. This is all the stuff that needs assembly. There were a couple of loose ones that I kind of had to assemble right away, but I figured before I move on to the other sets, I'd show you just a, just a couple of kind of what you get for anyone who's interested. So, one thing is there's a whole bunch of goblins on sprues and you know you just can never seem to have enough goblins like it's weird your miniature collection you always seem to have too many goblins but when it comes to the time to actually use the goblins it always seems like you never have enough so it's always nice to have more one of my favorites over here is actually the crab let me get him in focus i had to put him together real quick but it was pretty easy to Put together. I just use super glue. Oh, let me see if see if I can pick them up and yeah. Because again, you know, stuff like this sometimes is hard to find in the right scale, and those are the best kind of miniatures when you manage to pick them up. Um, you got a big angry gorilla over there, dire crocodile, dire boar, dire everything. What oh, is? Oh well, back here on the translucent green, they're hard to make out on camera but they're like ghost pirates which is pretty cool and I've never really painted translucent stuff before so I don't know quite how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna have to look up some tutorials on that so this is uh, probably one of my favorites of what doesn't need to be assembled just because you know having some statues like this lying around is always good for when you're setting up dungeons and I just love the detail on it. That's one of the nice things about the Bones sculpts is their detail level is pretty good for the most part. And as far as most of these goes, there's not a lot of cleaning up to do as far as the mold lines goes. At least not that I can see right away. Although, you know, under scrutiny, they'll probably... Well, everybody's going to need a little bit of cleaning up. But uh, the big issue is you know bent weapons but that's not too hard to fix with the whole uh, boiling water technique so 
quick little dip in some boiling water will fix that right up. All right, I'm gonna put these guys away and uh, move on over to Dark Reach. All right, so now we're taking a look at Dark Reach. And the nice thing about this one is it didn't require nearly as much assembly for most of them. Now there were like one or two that I did put together just because I was so excited to actually have them put together. But the cool thing about these, especially if you are, I guess, uninitiated into the tabletop world is, you know, when you think mostly like Dungeons and Dragons, you think of like orcs and goblins and all that crap. You don't usually think of all the other weird crap. Then this is what Dark Reach is really about. So, you got your mushroom people, your myconids, right? You got your oozes, your black puddings, the different kinds of living spores, living fungus. This guy's pretty cool. This is a displacer beast. And I have a custom built one. I made out of a little cheap, you know, toy panther with some octopus tentacles. But this is the real deal, baby. And I'm debating how I'm gonna paint this because again it's translucent my other one was solid plastic so I had to like cheat and try to use some different kind of paints and some washes to get sort of like that translucent look to them but this one is already translucent so I don't know how I'm gonna do that because I've never really had the let me move it back so it's a little more in focus I've never really had the opportunity to paint with translucent uh, Miniatures before. Got your troglodytes, yeah. Although I suppose you, you could honestly use these guys for almost any type of like underground fish monstrosity type thing. Now this guy, I was really excited about. This is, I forgot what Reaper calls it, but it's basically a beholder without the tentacles. It actually reminds me a lot of the Caco Demon from Doom. Of course, the Caco Demon was based on the Beholder from Dungeons and Dragons. Now, Reaper can't sell you a Beholder, because that's uh, part of Wizards of the Coast's product identity. But they can sell you something that looks almost just like a Beholder. So maybe I'll do a little modification and put some tentacles on this bad boy with some eye stalks, because I don't have a Beholder, and that's one of the few things in my collection that I've been sorely missing over the years. So. Uh, really cool. Really looking forward to painting this guy up. Now this dude, I don't know what he's riding, but all I know is I want, I want more of these. Cause <laughs> it's just, it's cool, man. This is, this is a memorable level one boss. This is something, cause it's clearly like a goblin or something, and he's riding some sort of weird, uh, I'm blanking on the arthropod type thing. Man, this could make for a cool boss fight for some low level characters, especially if you got a couple other goblins backing him up or something. That'd be really cool. And as you can guess, he comes with a whole bunch of other... I actually think these guys are gnomes. I think they are deep gnomes. Sverd Niflin or whatever the deep gnomes are called. So that's pretty cool too. But yeah, really satisfied with Dark Reach. Uh, very much looking forward to getting paint on all of these guys someday. So, let's move on to Dreadmere. That would be a lot cooler if that was in focus. Take two. So, let's move on to Dreadmare. All right, Dreadmare is kind of two things. We got a little casualty there that stands you back up. Dreadmare is kind of two things. It's like half about, you know, the swamp. And then half of it is all about, like, undead and just general creepy stuff. So, first of all, the sleeper hit of this for me was, let's see if I can focus this guy in. Here we go. Oh, that's nice. The sleeper hit of this for me was this guy right here. Because he is just absolutely creepy looking. And this is a main villain right here. Like, this is your big bad evil guy, you know? This is like some evil lich or something, or necromancer. Just the little detail of like, you know, his cloak is kind of animated and holding up his spell book. It's just so cool. I, I just love everything about this miniature. And I had totally forgotten it was even part of this. Now, the obvious hit that is just so much fun 
is the giant catfish. Because, first of all, no player is going to expect a giant catfish, number one. And number two, just, it's a giant catfish. If you can't appreciate that, what are you doing playing tabletop games? Uh, this crocodile guy is pretty cool too. He's, he could be a weird crocodile or just, uh, any kind of crocodile beast man type thing. Could also be like, uh, you know, like the lizard folk chieftain if you really want. If you really need something for that too, that's pretty cool. You got like weird fish, like amphibious fish things. Pretty cool. A lot of good sculpts for different kinds of NPCs and player characters. Let's see if I can zoom in on some of the cooler ones. Starting in the back. Oh, there's like a, a turtle caravan thing that's really cool. You know, you got, you got a lot of like assassin type characters. Some people could be like, uh, well, you got some major NPCs too. Like this, this dude could be uh, almost anything really. Um, it could be an aristocrat, some type of noble. Could be a wizard of some kind too, uh, which is also cool because he's a he's a bit portly, and you don't usually see a lot of portly miniatures who aren't like dwarves. For some reason, dwarves are always obese. But other than that, you, everybody's real thin. These two right here, I really like because they got like that Warhammer witch hunter thing going on with the hat and you know they got a crossbow and I'm, I'm glad they gave them a crossbow because not everybody does the whole black powder fantasy thing so uh, the cool thing is if you really wanted to make it a gun all you could all you really have to do is cut off the sides of the crossbows sure you could do a bit more modification but if you really wanted to pin, uh, turn that into a pistol nice and quick that's what you could do and then there's a little, just a lot of colorful like NPC swamp people here, which is really cool. You know, dudes with mugs, get someone collecting crops. And then there's this thing, which is like straight out of Call of Cthulhu. I I don't know what this is. It reminds me of a grill, but I I just have no idea what it's supposed to be. All I know is that I I love it, <laughs> and. I can't wait to have somebody fight this and for this thing to like read their thoughts while they're fighting it and all that kind of crazy psionic stuff it can do. So, uh, thankfully none of my players watch my channel or else now they're going to suspect the giant catfish and the brain monster and I'm not going to be able to use them. But thankfully none of my players watch my YouTube channel, at least not yet. So hopefully this slips by them. Alright, this is Lost Valley and... I think this is probably my favorite one yet. Uh, so, way to even begin. All right, first things first. Very happy to finally have some raptors in the nice, in the right scale. You know, I look for rap like cheap, uh, cheap toy raptors all the time, and they're always way too big. So, to finally have some, uh, you know, just a nice pack of five raptors of the right size is awesome. Now, like I said, I like to use a lot of prehistoric stuff in my games. And this has, like, a little bit of everything, so it's great. So you got, like, dinosaur people over here. All different kinds. There's, like, a Triceratops dude, a Pterodactyl dude. There's a giant ground sloth, which I had difficulty getting onto his base. And for some reason, he didn't quite fit, so... He's, uh, he's just doing a balancing act right now. And... His arm didn't quite fit either. I don't know if you can see. Um, so I'm going to have to like fill that in with something. I don't know what. Probably have to buy some green stuff to do that. And, uh, you know, you got your cave bears. There's like a prehistoric crocodile. He, let me try to get a good angle on him. He's got like a horn, horns on his snout. It's pretty cool. You got like, you know, your terror bird dinosaur over here. Um... I think this is a Carnosaurus? I don't know. He seems small. He seems in the wrong size. The Ankylosaurus over here is pretty cool, except one problem with him is he is really sharp to touch, and uh, he hurts. <laughs> so, I don't know if I gotta file those down or something, because as it stands right now, if you go to pick him up, you're gonna have a bad time. 
Okay, we'll just leave you down there. All right. You got stone giants. Pretty cool, pretty cool. One is a female stone giant, which is always nice to have. Then you also got your different kinds of cavemen. Uh, there's kind of like two types. There's kind of more like an Ice Age type, and then there's more of like a uh, Savage Lands kind of, you know, only a loincloth type. But my favorite miniature, hands down, let me grab him, bring him up front and center. And he might be my favorite of the whole bunch so far, of everything, is this. This mammoth giant chieftain guy. Just everything about him screams awesome. He's got so much detail. He didn't really require a lot of assembly. All I had to do was kind of put his weapon on there. And this guy, if you're running a prehistoric campaign or anything with prehistoric elements, this guy could be a boss. He could be a major NPC. So overall, I'd say I'm pretty satisfied with my uh, Paul here from, you know, Reaper. And I'm very satisfied about this Kickstarter. And I probably will if I'm in a good financial situation when the next one goes around. I'll probably contribute to that one too. I hope you guys enjoy taking a look at these, especially if you're someone who couldn't get them or, you know, anything like that. Or if you happen to be one of those people eagerly awaiting their packages that were delayed because of the Tree of Despair, which I didn't even really show off. Can I find it right here? There we go. It's in the, I'm going to keep in the packaging because it requires a little bit of assembly, and I don't really want to assemble it right now. But basically, it's literally just a tree with some vultures, and there's like a dead guy. That's it. And that, that delayed my entire shipment. <laughs> Mainly because I wanted to use it as a set piece for something down the line. So, anyway, keep it real, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this. I plan on doing more tabletop stuff on this channel eventually. I don't know when eventually is, but eventually is at least some type of time frame. So until then, I'll see you around.